The movie, where a guy delivers a newborn baby and eats it in front of its parents while it's still attached to its mother. Also known as Anthropophagus. I've been talking about doing a movie review series for a long time now, and I felt inclined to start it off with a review of this movie Anthropophagus. But the more I started writing the script for this video, the more I realized that I was mostly just interested in talking about the kills in this movie. And then I got to thinking, who says I need to review a whole ass movie? It's my channel, I can do what I want, and what I want to do is talk about crazy scenes of people in horror movies just getting destroyed. So let's consider this the, uh, the oops all crunch berries of movie reviews. I just found out that Dead Meat also does this, but I like it, so I'm gonna do it too. Oops all kills. I like it, let's go. This video is sponsored by Shudder. Shudder is my favorite streaming service, it's basically the Netflix of horror. With the internet's best selection of thrillers, horror, and suspense for $5.99 a month or $56.99 a year, you'll never get bored with new movies and shows added every week and you can stream on all of your favorite devices. Lately, I've been getting into Shudder's original creep show series. That Dollhouse episode is still sticking with me. And if you want to go deeper, Shudder has a massive selection of horror movies from around the world, from classics to modern favorites with a huge range of subgenres. Get started streaming the best horror, thriller, and supernatural content. Shudder's expertly curated collection includes must-see titles like Color Out of Space, Host, The Mortuary Collections, plus all the best horror documentaries in the hit creep show TV series from executive producer Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead. To try Shudder for 30 days, just go to Shudder.com and use code WANG. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com. And now, our feature presentation. There was a period of time in my journey as a horror movie fan where I was getting very into that relatively small subgenre of cannibal movies. You probably immediately think of stuff like Cannibal Holocaust or Cannibal Ferrix, and if you're very into it, maybe some others, like that movie Cut and Run which stars Charles in Charge's Willie Amos. Personally, I like to think of that movie as Buddy Lembeck's origin story. But the thing about that subgenre, you watch a lot of it and it starts to get kind of repetitive. You keep going back to that same South American jungle setting, with similar setups and similar conflicts with local tribes. Anthropophagus takes a different approach with the subgenre and kind of blends it with a slasher film. And instead of taking us to South America, it takes us to an obscure Greek island. It's directed by the infamous Italian director Joe D'Amato, also credited in the same movie by his real name, Aristide Masakesi. It's unclear why I used both names in this movie, maybe it's kind of like the old school version of when you're trying to get subscribers on your second channel. And Joe D'Amato specifically is known for having so many different pseudonyms. To the point where it's theorized that there's probably a lot of films out there that he made that have never been attributed to him. And in the case of Anthropophagus, it's possible that he used two different names in an attempt to skirt union regulations. Something that sounds very believable and exploitation filmy. And Joe's not the only one, also doing double duty here, is George Eastman, who plays the titular monster, the Anthropophagus. George was a staple of Italian B-movies. Particularly spaghetti westerns in which he was often cast as a bad guy for his villainous features and his massive size, a towering 6 foot 9. And in this one, he also wrote the screenplay credited by his real name Luigi Montefiore. So as we go through this movie, keep in mind that he wrote all the stuff he does for himself. And also note that he has since expressed that he's embarrassed by this movie. But anyway, before we get into the kills, let's take a look at the menu. Carol. According to her tarot cards, everyone is fucked. Alan, Carol's brother, who claims that she's been a lunatic ever since they were kids. Guess we'll find out who's crazy now. Maggie, she's pregnant. A two-for-one meal for Anthropophagus, a human turducken, a kinder surprise egg, you know they're still legal in Greece. Arnie, Maggie's baby daddy. You're about to save a lot of money, Arnie. Don't spend it all in one place. Danny, Danny's just here to fuck. My man, Julie. Julie's the one who suggests the detour to the forbidden island in Greece so she can meet her friends. So basically, this is all her fault. You've ruined Alan and everyone's beautiful Greek vacation. Who will survive? Let's find out. A German couple is enjoying their lovely vacation on a Greek island, and they got a dog that happened to wander on the beach with them. I know what you're worried about, and no, the dog does not get killed. It is Anthropophagus, not Dogopophagus. 
Germans, however, are people, so it doesn't end up too good for them. For some reason, despite traveling all the way from Germany to Greece to enjoy a lovely vacation together, they split up as soon as they get to the beach. The woman goes for a swim where she notices an abandoned boat, so she goes to check it out and boom, anthropophagus, pulled underwater and turned into a red cloud. We now take on the perspective of presumably one anthropophagus as blood drips in front of him, implying that he's walking around with his hands in front of him like some kind of Frankenstein. The dog tries to warn the guy, but he's got his headphones on. He's too busy vibing to his techno music that sounds like the robot song from Spongebob. There's no separating a German from his techno, but unfortunately, sir, you are not getting in to Bergheim. While waiting on the boat, with the ship's captain Aristide, Maggie marinates her foot in a bucket of water. The water gets warm, so she asks him if he can get her some cold water, and being a baiter, he obliges. However, after lowering the bucket into the water, he decides to take an impromptu dip himself after being yanked in by the rope, having apparently missed the letting go part of his bucket training seminar. A confused Maggie begins searching for him, and after concluding that the human-sized splash that occurred two meters away from her must have been in her imagination, she decides to retrieve the bucket herself. Distracted by some spaghetti or something off camera, she pulls up the bucket the entire way without looking at it once, before realizing her mistake once she puts her foot inside. Not only was it full of refreshing cold water, but also the decapitated head of a Reister Day, which was previously attached to his body. Eagle-eyed viewers will note that this is not actually his real head, but instead the worst paper mache job in existence, possibly commissioned by a local elementary school. I mean, come on. While in the basement of Julie's friend's abandoned house, a woman pops out of a barrel in a panic, stabbing wildly in the air, nicking Danny in the back with the knife. Danny survives, however, and they patch him up like Leon Kennedy. The girl is identified as Julie's friend's blind daughter, Henriette, who has seemingly encountered the anthropophagus before. Late at night, while Danny is watching over her, she knows he's there. She can smell him. And I believe her because he definitely looks like he smells. What do you think he smells like? Danny goes looking for him and, without realizing it, locks her in the room with the anthropophagus. As he approaches, Henriette screams and Danny comes back to save her, even after she stabbed him in the back. And what does he get for it? Bitten in the neck. And not by Julie as he had hoped. Here lies Danny. He never scored. The gang wanders through the island looking for Carol, who had run off after seeing the now PK Danny trying to make a move on Julie. In their search, they find a villa. Julie believes it belongs to an affluent local family, the Wartmans. Months prior, the patriarch Klaus Wartman had been shipwrecked with his wife and child, leaving behind a sister who had been driven insane by the tragedy. And there she is. And there she goes. And hero. They try to cut her down, but it's a little too late, man. But hey, at least Carol is safe and sound. Carol is not safe and sound. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the kill that I clickbaited you with. The scene that will bring out the kid in you, and I'm 99% sure that every single person that's ever watched this movie has made that joke, but I'm gonna do it too. Arnie discovers an ancient church with catacombs filled with spooky skeletons. And one non-skeleton. Hey, it's Maggie. Arnie tries to carry her off, but Anthropophagus has them cornered. Pointing a knife like that teddy bear in that drawing, he pleads that they're expecting a baby, a phrase that appears to trigger a memory in Anthropophagus. Anthropophagus tilts his head back, and we cut to a tired little ginger boy and a woman on a raft, their skin dry and peeling from the oppressive sun. An exhausted Klaus Wartman, pre-Anthropophagus, pre-skin condition, looks up at them. He grabs his knife and pleads with his wife that they must eat the child so that they may survive. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm bad. But his wife ain't having it. She's channeling Sergeant Slaughter in the G.I. Joe movie. We all go home and nobody goes home. Klaus makes his move, but his wife jumps in front of the knife, saving their child but severing Klaus's last connection to sanity. <laughs> Cut to Arnie getting stabbed just like the Anthropophilite. He's not dead yet, though. He gets to sit and watch as the moment comes. Anthropophagus chokes the life out of Maggie, and as she tries to stop him, he pulls out her fetus, 
and takes a big chomp out of it as Arnie watches on helplessly. Consider that it's very likely that you have never had a meal this fresh. So in this scene, the fetus the Anthropophagus takes a bite out of actually, it's not a real fetus, it's actually a skinned rabbit. And according to an interview with Joe D'Amato, this scene had actually been a lot longer. The scene that we see in the final movie cuts after he takes the bite, but there's actually more to it. Realistically though, it didn't need much more, as in my opinion, this is one of the most brutal scenes in all of horror. Not just for the gore, but for the emotional weight of the scene. The way Maggie knows he's gonna try to eat the baby and she tries to move his hand but she can't as she's being choked to death. The way that Arnie spent this entire movie trying to save his wife and unborn child from this very scenario, only to fail completely at it and have his worst fear be the last thing he ever sees. And we're not done yet. Anthropophagus chases Julia and the blind girl up the stairs of his own villa. Very slowly. It makes sense, the Greeks have a long storied tradition of drama. Because he takes so long, the girls manage to lock themselves up in the attic, and it seems like they're safe for now. Nope. Chuck Desta. Anthropophagus punches through the roof, pulls her up, cuts her face open on the wood as he's pulling her through. Julia tries to save her by making the hole bigger with a pickaxe, but it's too little too late. You've been... Anthropophagus. Julia keeps swinging that pickaxe though and eventually she gets him right in the leg, causing him to comically grab it like Peter Griffin. Ah. And then he falls off the roof. So that's it, right? There's no way he can possibly survive a fall like that. Maybe a normal man can, but this guy just ate a fetus. He's hopped up on stem cells. It's gonna take more than that. In fact, it looks like he fell all the way into a well like Timmy O'Toole. A well that Julia for some reason investigates and subsequently gets pulled into, dangling on a rope by her arm. And who's got the other end of that rope? Anthropophagus, of course. And he's chasing Julia up the ladder and out the well where they find themselves embroiled in a good old Texas strap match. Where's the turnbuckles? Now you see, the thing about a Texas strap match, outside interference is legal. Remember Alan? You might not, I mean, he's barely been around the whole movie and he kinda looks like a palette swap of Arnie. But sure enough, he runs in with the pickaxe and hits Klaus in the belly, unleashing one final treat for the Anthropophagus, his own freaking guts. Klaus anthropophagizes himself as Alan gives him a look like, I'm not surprised, just disappointed. Klaus shoots back one last defiant look as he bites into his own intestines and falls over dead, leaving the internal question unanswered. Since you make poo with your intestines, if you eat your own intestines, will they become poo? This is a film that doesn't care to answer such philosophical questions. Nor does it really need to. I was thinking of doing some kind of a tier list of the kills here, but really, how do you compare the rest of the kills in this movie to what I legitimately consider to be one of the most horrific scenes in all of horror? That being said, a lot of the effects, in my opinion, are actually really well done. Especially considering that Joe Diamato had said that this was the least expensive film he had ever made. With that in mind, I think this movie is in some ways a testament to how even very cheap practical effects can be better than modern CG horror effects. Except for that head in the bucket, I mean, come on, seriously? Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the f <laughs> No, 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 no. But in general, it did a pretty good job. As for the movie itself, I will say that when I first watched this movie, I want to say like 15 years ago maybe, I felt at the time that it was kind of a boring, slow slog that I was going through just to see these set pieces that I had heard so much about. But watching it again for this video, I don't really feel the same way. Now that slowness kind of translates into an atmosphericness for me. Maybe it's because my tastes have changed a bit over the years, or maybe it's because in the time since, I've seen so many other films that were much slower and paced much worse with less of a payoff. In any case, this is very obviously far from a perfect movie, not something that I would recommend to people who aren't horror fans, but for people who are horror fans, I definitely think it is something worth checking out. But anyway, that's it for Anthropophagus. As for the series, I had a lot of fun making this video. It's very different from anything I've done on the channel. I'm not exactly 100% sure if I want to keep this format or tweak it a little bit, but it's something you can expect me to be experimenting with a bit in the future. Anyway, let me know what you think the craziest horror movie kills are, um, other movies you would like me to cover like this, 
And if you like this video, check out my video about the Lost Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. I'm out.